hey they're good looking if you are looking for a no nonsense strength workout no cardio let's just build those muscles this is the workout for you i'd love for you to grab what you consider are moderate to heavy dumbbells and maybe grab an assortment now heads up our work time is going to be shorter and our rest time a little longer in today's workout so make sure you do grab some heavier dumbbells so that you can challenge your muscles now, in addition to dumbbells, I also would love for you to have something that you can pop your heels up on. So that can be a pair of really light dumbbells where you can pop them up on the post or a couple of rolled towels or um, I've got some slant yoga blocks if you have those. And then you'll also need a chair or a bench. All right, let's go get warmed up. All right, let's start down on the mat to warm up. We're gonna start with a core activation and then move through the body like so. Get set up into dead bug, knees over the hips, wrists in line with the shoulders, draw the belly button in towards the back of the spine, anchoring the low back, but not pushing the low back into the mat. There's still that neutral curve. Take your left leg and opposite arm and extend them both if you can, heel to the ground, thumb to the ground, but never losing that neutral spine. Breathe, other arm, other leg. Now keep those knees over the hips. Quite often I see people creep those knees closer towards the chest. We want them right over the hips. And this is a position that we call tabletop. Really good core activation because when we're lifting heavy dumbbells, guess what else we're training? You got it, your core. Last four. Breathe, three. One more each side. Last one. Beautiful. Arms down, feet hip width apart, close to the glutes. In fact, you can feel your heel, heels with your fingertips. Squeeze the glutes, drive the hips up. Wake up into the glutes now. When our bum lowers, it just touches the mat, and then we go back right into the next wrap. Two more. Now right here, lift and hold the hips up for me. And now let's add some marching knees without shifting the hips. So now it's a coordination of both glute and core. Not letting those hips drop as that one foot comes up off your mat. Nice, let's do four more here. Here's four, three, two, and one. Feet on the ground, lower the hips down. Find yourself into a standing position, nice and tall on the body for me, getting into the lower legs here, feet shoulder width apart or wider, squat, and then heel lift. So we have four sets, two different groupings of moves. This is actually a personal workout of mine. Um, I did it a few weeks ago. When I do my own personal workouts, I don't do anything fancy. Most trainers don't. We stick with the basics. Squat, a push exercise, a pull exercise, a lunge exercise. And it is sufficient enough to get the body strong. So we'll go through five moves, four rounds, last three. Take a break and then move into a final series of moves. One more. Excellent, side hip activation, mirror me, softness in this knee, this guy's bent at 90, coming straight out to your side, so not in front, hinge forward slightly from the hips, Woo. find that balance, good job you, four more, here's four, three, two, one, okay, other side, try not to hold on to anything, the whole idea here is to activate that stable and stabilize. Last four, three, two, one, feet apart, abs engage, big arm circles for me, get into those shoulders. So we're starting with push-ups. Now listen, if it's not your jam, there is gonna be mini me up there doing a push-up off of a chair. All right, it makes it a lot easier. If push-ups still aren't your thing, you could do them against a wall standing, or just say to hell with push-ups, PJ, I'm not doing them, and do some chest press with dumbbells. Now open and close. So you choose what's gonna work for you. 
If you can do push-ups, I do tr recommend you try it, and maybe try it off of the chair like you're gonna see mini me up there. All right, let's get set up. I'm doing mine from my knees. Push-ups aren't my strong suit. Let's get set into a modified plank. You can go off the toes if you like. Fingers are spread. Hands are just slightly wider than shoulders. Elbows are gonna draw towards the sides as you lower down. So you don't want them flaring out. In fact, that bottom part of your push-up, your head and your arms kind of mimic an arrow shape. Now, as we press up, that's our exhale. We're standing in 10 seconds. Take it slow. I don't want you to pump out a ton of reps. I want you to pump out a few good reps. All right, split squat. Holding on to one heavy dumbbell. Place it in the hand, whatever hand that dumbbell is in, step that leg back. Other hand is on the hip or out here to help brace the core further. Lower down, drive up, straightening this front leg. This front knee tracks with the toe, upper body is upright. All right, we got shoulder and hip aligned. Now you take it down as deep as it feels comfortable for you. So for some, that might be a micro bend. All right, for others, it might be knee to ground. And then there'll be everything in between. This is a static squat time or a split squat. So we start with feet hip width apart. Sorry, it's a, it's a static lunge or a split squat. Feet hip width apart, step back, tighten up the core, down and up. We've got a lot happening in our core too by only holding onto one dumbbell. So the obliques have to really fire up so that the body stays stable and strong. Few more reps and then if you've got even a heavier one, we're gonna grab that and move into a one arm row. Last one. All right. So using your chair, or your bench, Hold on to the dumbbell with your left hand. Place your right hand so that you're like a tripod. Push your hips back, draw the elbow up, and release. So I've got a 30 here. I encourage you to try a little heavier. These are our back muscles. Make sure you have neutral spine, and they tend to be stronger. We also have the assistance of our arm here and shoulder. Exhale as we pull up. Feet are apart. As I said, we're in this tripod position. I find this is the nicest position for low backs. And if I want you lifting heavy, I don't want you to strain your low back. Time. So what you gotta make sure that you do, however, is you hip hinge. So we've got that neutral spine, not round over your waist, okay? Over your um, top of the pant there. Hip hinge, tripod the arms. Exhale, pull up. Keeping the toes, knees, hips, shoulders squared. Neck lines up with the spine. Don't forget about that poor head. All right, the neck is a continuation of that spine. We're not, again, looking for a ton of reps. Between 10 to 12, so slow, controlled speed, heavier weight. Get to build that muscle. Last one. All right. So that's round one, okay? I'm gonna take it back to the push-up. Maybe you're using your chair. Maybe you're joining me down on the knees or toes. Your hands, just wider than shoulders. Fingers are spread. Grip the mat with your hands. Elbows tuck in a bit, chest to ground if you can. Press up. Again, we're not looking for a ton of reps. I want pretty looking. So if you can do two good looking ones, perfect. That's going to far help yourself out and excel in your push-up category than if you were to do eight crappy looking ones. Breathe out as you press up. One more. Oh yeah, all right. Grab your heavy left hand, feet hip width apart, left leg steps behind. Tighten up the core, bring the arm out, shoulders back and down. Take it down as deep as it feels comfortable, straightening that front leg every wrap.
One more. Whew. Other side. So feet hip width, and then we step back hip width, and that's really gonna help your balance. So if you find you're kind of all over the place when you're lunging, you might not have those feet hip width, you might be stepping behind like that. So at time of filming, <laughs> this is my second workout that I have filmed since getting back from Italy. <laughs> and there's a few bloopers for the intro. <laughs> I just couldn't get my act together. <laughs> time. All right, one arm row. And again, if you can, grab a heavier weight. We're gonna go back to that left arm. We tripod so that right hand is just in front. We shoot our hips back so that our dumbbell can easily come between the chair and our legs. Yes, if you are new to the channel or over 50 fitness, if you're enjoying this ads free over there, loving husband and I spent the month of September in Southern Italy, landed Naples, down to Amalfi Coast, there for a week, picked up a car, one more, Woo. and then made our way to Sicily, and then drove back up. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> How could it not be, right? <laughs> Here we go. Sit yourself back. Ready? Long spine, and breathe. Coming home, though, that was a bit of a poop show. <laughs> Within 24 hours of landing, our German Shepherd got skunked, just so gross. 48 hours later, LH, loving husband, tests positive for COVID. 72 hours later, I test positive for COVID. We were sick, sick, sick for a good week. One more, and release. All right, we're halfway. Back to the push-ups, chair or bench, or maybe you're using dumbbells for chest press. And then it was our Canadian Thanksgiving and I burnt the crap out of dinner, <laughs> and we ended up having toast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get me back to Italy. <laughs> Here you go, lower, press, breathe out. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was quite the transition from holiday to work. <laughs> it's all good now, though. If you want any tips on Italy, oh, I can give you some. <laughs> We've spent now a total of two months there. Time. All right, split squat. Dumbbell in the left hand, feet hip width. Step back. Tighten up the core. We're ready. Three, two, one, and take her down. But I think my biggest tip is don't try to do too much. <laughs> We talked to some family actually when we were flying home in Naples and there was a huge group of them from the States and they did Venice, Cinque Terre, Florence, Rome, what else? Naples, oh my goodness, they were all over. It's like one or two days each place. One more. Other side. Now granted, not everyone can take a whole month off so I can still work while I travel. But if it's 10 days, you know, just choose a couple of areas. You'll really get a lot more out of it than bopping all over the country. But still my fave, what we did last year was Tuscany. That's still my favorite area of Italy. One more. Woo. All right, one arm row. So our next big trip is Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. So if you have any tips, drop them below after the workout. Here we go, left hand dumbbell, right hand tripod, neutral spine, draw that belly button in.
However, I would like to go back to Italy again. <laughs> it's just such an amazing country. One more. However, if you've traveled to Italy, maybe you'll agree with me. Their beds are hard as rock. Are you done? If you like that thing, perfect. You love Italy. Or you could be like me, and I didn't really sleep for 30 days. Holy cow. Yeah, take a brick and put a sheet over it. That's an Italian bed. <laughs> Unless you go really high-end hotel, some of their beds are softer. Last year in Tuscany, the, we based ourselves just outside of Arezzo, and her bed was amazing. But other than that, I think that's just the thing. They like a harder bed. Whew. One more. Whew. Time. All right. Okay. We good? Perfect. We're on our last round, and then we'll grab a water, and we'll move into a new series. Push-ups, chair bench, or join me, or maybe you're doing chest press dumbbells. Fingers are spread. Grip the mat with your fingertips. Take the pressure off of the wrist. Push up. Good. You want that head lined up with the whole spine. Don't let the head drop forward. We want a strong plank, so it's not the bum up and the chest coming down. So if that's you, I want you to elevate your hands. I want you to regress to progress, okay? One more. All right, split squat. Left hand dumbbell, feet hip width, left leg, good stride behind you. Drop to the spine, shoulder and hip aligned. Tighten the core, lower down. It's important when we're exercising, you guys, you recognize that maybe you need to take it back a few notches to be able to build to that. Instead of, I'm just gonna keep powering these through and I'll eventually get strong. You won't, what you're doing is now muscle memory, crappy form, potentially injuring yourself. And then it's gonna take us even harder to get you back to where you were and then beyond that, either side. So regress a bit, listen to the cues of, you know, how to do an alternative motion and then follow suit and stay with me and we will get you there. Here we go. Right arm, right leg, take it down. Drive up. Straightening that front leg with every rep. One more. All right. So our final pattern, our rows. As we do the rows, I'll talk briefly about the programming and, and why it's in the order that it is, because there is kind of a method to the madness. Let's start with the left hand, right hand. All right. So our first move, we worked our push muscles. Those are the muscles in the front of our body, our pecs. Front shoulder, and then we also got the back of the arm, your tricep. Then we move to the legs so that the upper body can recover a bit. And then our final move here, we work into the back muscles, now the posterior chain. So this is our last rear delt, mid lower traps, and then at the front of the arm, the bicep. One more. So these five moves alone, well technically they're three moves, right? Because they're single limb. Train everything 360 degrees, and then they're in an order that one area rests so you can amply amp it up and really perfect your form and lift heavy. And this is how I train me, and I still train a few personal training clients. That's how I train them as well. <sighs> Cycling through the entire body. One more. <sighs> All right, we get a minute break. Okay, I'm gonna push the chair out of the way. Don't need it. Grab a sip of water. Now we're gonna start challenging some of the smaller muscles of the body that assisted us just on the big lifts that we just completed. 
with the exception of our legs, we're still going to keep it as a big lift. Now, I had mentioned to grab some rolled towels or maybe, <clears throat> pardon me, some light dumbbells, like five pounds. I have wedges here, but our second exercise is going to be a depth squat where I want you to elevate just your heels. Hold on to a dumbbell is optional, and you're going to take it all the way down. Quite often, what limits our range for the depth or for a squat is our ankle range of motion. So we'll take that out of the equation by using that. Now let's get set up with some moderate dumbbells. We're gonna move into an alternating Arnie press. So hold the dumbbells in front, palms facing you, core tight. Now just mirror me, take your right arm, come down and then rotate the palm so it's facing you again. Now your other arm. So shoulders and triceps, upper traps, and because we're standing, right, we've got the legs fired up, and because we're using dumbbells, now we have your core fired up too. All right, we're gonna move into that depth squat. I'm just gonna hold on to one dumbbell. If you're going all the way down with me, you might wanna go a little lighter, just cause this really does light up your quads. You have the option too of just doing a regular squat and not taking it all the way down. Now it's important when we go all the way down though, you're not tucking the tailbone under. So if you're coming down and you feel that happening, I want you to get rid of these or whatever you have your heels on and just do a regular squat, okay? One more. All right, moving into the back of the arm, the triceps. Holding on to the dumbbell, end to end. You can stagger your stance, tighten up in the core, bring the arms up, dumbbell post comes behind the head, and then straighten the arms. Next exercise will be a bicep curl. So we'll place the focus on the front of the arm. So once again, we're working all through the muscles, front and back of body, and in order that they get to recover before we pick on them again. <laughs> and bring the dumbbell down. All right, bicep curl. Start with the dumbbells underneath your shoulders and your palms facing you. Now, as we curl the dumbbells towards the shoulder, we're gonna turn the palm so that the pinkies face each other and then rotate and come back down. We're not swinging the arms. This is all controlled through the biceps. And again, we're thinking about quality, not quantity. One more move to go and then we'll take it back to the Arnie press. Last curl. All right, moving into a plank. It's nothing fancy, it's just from the forearms. Now planks don't work for you. You can also do a dead bug like we did in warm up. Otherwise, you're on the forearms, knees to modify or intermediate advance off the knees. Now if you wanna make it a little harder, have the palms facing down and then try to pull your elbows in towards your toes and your toes towards your elbows. That's gonna light up the core a little bit harder. Neck lines up with that spine. Last 10 seconds, moving back to that Arnie press in three, two, one, come on up. Now, if you'd like, you can try this half kneeling, only if you'd like, otherwise stand. You've got one leg in front, doesn't matter which one, our dumbbells are facing us. We alternate, press, and down. So we've taken some of the load off of the legs. So this will make this harder for the shoulders. So you can sort of adjust according to your goals. For me, I wanna get my shoulders strong again. They um, <laughs> lost a lot of muscle <laughs> while I was traveling, <laughs> whereas my legs didn't because I was still doing a lot of walking. One more, and release. 
All right, we've got those depth squats or maybe you felt more comfortable just doing a regular squat. Now where's your setup for your heels? Shoulder width, so not hip. Dumbbells optional and take it all the way down. Don't bounce, drive up. We'll give the legs a break for our next exercise and work the triceps. All right. Now, a different way of holding on to the dumbbell for tricep extensions is holding on to the end. So it's like so, okay. I still like a staggered stance. Straighten and bend. Exhale as we're pressing that dumbbell up. Again, make sure you're challenging your muscles. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you the other thing that went wrong when we got back from Italy. I threw my low back out. My uh, low back had herniated disc last year. That happened again. <laughs> and release. <laughs> I know, it was so good. The first 18 days home is just one adventure after another. All right, bicep curls. I have since bought an inversion table where you flip yourself upside down. Now there isn't a ton of solid research on inversion tables. So why did I get one? Because I do believe in traction. I found one being sold on Virage and I'm gonna try it five minutes a few times a day. Now, before you go and buy one, make sure you don't have high blood pressure, you don't have a history of heart issues, and you don't have a history of eye issues, glaucoma, detached retina time. So you shouldn't be doing inversions if you have any of those. All right, but I'll keep you posted how my low back is feeling with it. It's only, I've only been using it for two days now. All right, into that plank, or maybe you're doing a dead bug because planks aren't your thing. Let's go knees or toes. And again, remember, we can make it a little harder. Palms flat on our mat, trying to get the uh, shoulder, sorry, the wrists lined up with the elbows as best you can. And then you draw the elbows in towards the toes and the toes coming up towards the elbows. And you're gonna fire that core up even more. Last three, two, one, release. Arnie press. If you're doing it half kneeling with me, we'll do the other leg in front this time. Otherwise, standing if this is irritating the knee itself. Take the palms so they face you. Alternate which arm. Ready and go. So inversion table is basically hanging upside down. Not quite upside down. And it's taking the pressure off of the discs. As we age, as we sit more, like my job is a lot of sitting. All right, those discs tend to prolapse because of that, especially in the lower back because of our postures. So this just takes the load and gets the disc back into alignment. That's a very simplified way of explaining it. Time, all right, depth squat. Heels up. Okay, ready, set, take it down. But always do your research when you're gonna try something new. Don't take, you know, somebody like me on YouTube's word for it or anybody else on social media. Dig through the research, see if it's gonna work for you. Give it a try. One more. All right, triceps. So you've got those two grips I told you about. You choose which is gonna work best for you. I like holding it end to end. That's just a personal preference though. Arms up, ready, set, go.
I have started a ton of courses though, since we've gotten them back because I feel I have an obligation now with, especially with YouTube and over 50 fitness to provide you with the most current information at all times. So I take it seriously. So yeah, I've been doing some really fun courses, bicep curls. So you'll see maybe some changes in my teaching as I grow as an instructor and curl. And then as may you also see me double down on some stuff that I've already been teaching and preaching. Woo, and plank it out now. All right, so again, if planks aren't for you, I know that there are some of you that have commented because you have a prolapsed disc, disc in your neck or shoulder issues, then you'll do a dead bug. Otherwise, down here with me, knees to modify, and then try to pull the elbows towards the toes, the toes towards the elbows, long spine, long neck. So I want that gaze just at the top of your mat. We're not gonna let that head drop. Remember, hands flat, we're not clasping and creating energy in, from the hands. We want all the energy into the core. Three, two, one, release. Woo! All right, let's stand for our final Arnie press. And yes, it is named after the man, Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. Palm facing, knees soft, Draw that core in, press. So it just adds an extra element to the shoulder with the rotation. Woohoo, your <laughs> shoulders are getting tired. <laughs> so I love multiple sets. Any trainer with any type of education behind them will tell you that is volume that gets you the results you're looking for. And this is a high volume workout time. All right, deep squat, elevating those heels. Where do you want your dumbbell posts, towels, or wedges? Shoulder width. Take it down, three, two, one, let's go. One more. Woo! All right, triceps. Tighten those abs, dumbbell up, and down. So our exhale is as we're lifting the dumbbell up. As we train heavier dumbbells, I want you to think about that breath and that exhale on the hard. Last one. Woo! All right, bicep curl. Nice tall body. Softness in the knees, shoulders back and down. Now we rotate the pinky so they face each other when the hands are up to the shoulders. Get one more in. All right, we plank and then we sip some water. Whew. Okay, or maybe you're doing the dead bug. All right, listen to what your body needs right now. Here we go, from the knees or the toes, three, two, one, lift. 
So our last exercise crew, we will move into some beautiful stretches afterwards. Now, if you've got to continue on with your day, because the stretches are going to be a little longer than normal, um, push pause or push stop here and, you know, time stamp to come back later on to finish the stretches. Stretches are also really nice to do just before bed. Helps settle the mind. Woo, time. Big toes together, knees open, sit back on your heels. Walk the hands forward and drop the chest and head through the arms. And breathe. If you can, forehead to mat. Come on up. Grab a sip of water if you need it. Cheers. All right, if you're not already in um, socks or bare feet, the very least take your shoes off. Perfect. Okay. Now let's take the left knee under the hip, right leg extends, and I want you to lunge forward just a bit. Okay. Now here is the biggest tip for this exercise. You want to squeeze the glute and tuck the tailbone under, square your shoulders and hips, and you're going to feel a beautiful stretch in the hip flexor. Now let's inhale this left arm straight up, extending, moving rib away from hip, and then lean away and breathe. It's been a while since I've released a longer strength with a longer stretch. And that's really because of silly YouTube. <laughs> People see a 40 minute workout or 45 minute workout and they're like, no, I can't do that. Today, I'm gonna be honest, I did the workout for me. <laughs> I'm doing the stretches for me. So if you can join me, I love that. All right, now let's take our dumbbells. Bring them just in front of that leg we're stretching. So we build our ground up and straighten the leg. Hinge forward. I used to do really long stretches and people loved it, but we do see a high degree of drop off. So if you can come back to it later. But it's quite funny because when we used to teach fitness classes, they were an hour. Nobody had a problem with that. It seems YouTube workouts though, anything past 30 minutes. <laughs> People can't do them. Really sink into this. So what we're doing here, a couple of things. We're pushing the hip back and then lengthening the spine. So this is why I love having the ground built up, either with dumbbells or a yoga block. Two more breaths. All right, let's take the other leg. We can leave the dumbbells there. So back, hip and knee aligned. Walk this front leg forward a couple inches and then you lunge forward, line that ankle and knee up. Now we extend and then tuck the tailbone under, squeeze that right glute, inhale the right arm straight up. So we're creating space where the rib and hip are and then lean away. All right, let's take this arm, circle it behind. Just feels nice. Now we've got those dumbbells set up already so we can straighten that front leg and then we hinge through the hips, lengthen the back of the leg and then lengthen the spine. Try to drop the shoulder blades back and down and really open up the chest so we're not rounding anything in the back. If anything, there's actually a bit of extension versus flexion. And then as you hold the stretch, you may feel that sort of initial tightness subside a bit. Some areas will take longer than others, but when you feel that, see if you can then take it just a bit deeper, ignite that area again, and then breathe and hold. That's optional. There are some times where perhaps you just wanna stretch a little bit 
and just kind of relax into the motion. Always give your body what it needs. It's just a matter of listening to it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not the best either. <laughs> what do you mean you got a herniated disc? That's okay. We can still squat. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> All right, let's step this leg back. Let's move into the T-spine now and into the back muscles. We're going to start by taking that left hand. First, let's get set up into tabletop. Knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. Inhale that left arm, swing it up, look up, and then exhale and bring it under. Come down on the side of the arm. Take this other arm and straighten it, walking it up the mat. Sitting the bum back a bit towards the heels. Now when we come back out of it, we're going to bring that left arm back up towards the ceiling again. One more breath. Now let's slide the right hand underneath the shoulder. Use the right arm to push ourselves up while we bring that arm up and then plant it. Other side, inhale, right arm up, look up. Exhale, thread it under. Walk the hand forward. I can't go too forward or I'm gonna hit the mic, but your arm will be extended straight up. And then really walk that hand, that right hand away from your body to get more of a stretch in the shoulder blade, shoulder area. One more breath. Left hand, press up, right arm, extend. And back down. Good job. Let's take yourself into a seated position. Butterfly stretch for the inner thighs. Insoles of the feet together. Let's draw up through the spine. So what we want to avoid is this sort of rounding. And if you find you just cannot stop yourself from rounding, I want you to sit your bum right up against a wall and sit your whole spine against a wall. That's really going to give you some assistance with that. Now from here, if you're able to, you grab the ankles lightly and just draw forward, hinging through that hip, pressing the elbows into the inner thighs to lower the legs down to your floor, and breathe. Now the same stretch again, this time with straight legs. Let's get the legs out wide. Press the backs of the knees in towards your mat. Hands come behind you. Sit yourself up. So this is where you may want to stay. If you're able to press yourself forward, go for it. If you're really flexible and bendy, you could walk yourself forward. My watch is asking me if I finished my workout. No, I haven't. Now our feet are active, so they're not dropping forward. All right, let's flex the foot. Press the backs of the knees towards the mat. Press yourself forward more. You may find that you're tighter on this, and this is stretching the long head of the adductors, the inner thigh. Release, final stretch into the hips, the side of the hip and the glutes. Figure four, left ankle over right thigh. If you can, lift the right leg up and grab behind the thigh. Now, if that isn't accessible for you, you could use a yoga tie around that right thigh or a bathrobe tie or an old necktie, okay? And use that tie to sort of add an extension to your arms. Now we're drawing this right knee towards the outside of the right shoulder, not across the body. That's gonna change the stretch considerably. Now let's lift the head up, slide the chin in, and lower down so the back of the neck is nice and long. Always being mindful again of our neck. Now, as you hold the stretch, if you can take it a bit deeper, one option is to draw the right knee towards you a bit more, or maybe walk your hands on top of the shin instead of behind the thigh. Well, let's not lose that length in the back of the neck, though. Two more breaths.
foot to ground, change sides. Same thing, if you've got the yoga tie, put it around this left leg now, drawing the left knee towards the outside of the left shoulder. On this side, maybe you can walk the hands on top of the shins. Shin. And release. Let's just straighten the legs. Have the feet apart so they're mat width. Bring the arms down by your side, palms up. Close the eyes. Let's just spend just a couple of minutes here focusing on our breath. So what I want you to do is really sink into the ground. Release any tension that you may have. Let those feet drop out. Let the fingertips curl. And then feel the breath move through the belly and maybe even expanding that breath to take it around the back. And you can do it with through your nose or inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth, whatever feels the right fit for you. Just really feeling the ground, anchoring ourselves to our breath. And just letting the body absorb everything we just did. And bring the knees to the chest. Maybe you like a little movement with that and you'll rock them side to side. Now, same thing, if knees to chest don't work for you, you can take that yoga strap, double it up, wrap it around the back of the knees, and use the strap. I really recommend if you don't own a yoga strap and yoga blocks, they're not an expensive purchase, and they will help you in a lot of exercises in strength as well as in stretching. Now, let's roll onto our left side. And then let's use the arms to pick ourselves up. Working our way into a cross-legged, what they call easy sitting position in yoga. So sit right on those sit bones for me. Pick up the chest. Shoulders is squared and right lined up with those ears. Are you there? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you going through this workout. As I mentioned, it's one of my personal favorites. It's nothing fancy, but it hits all the right areas. If you'd like to support this YouTube channel, please consider joining Patreon. It does help us keep these workouts going on YouTube. Or if you'd like more assistance as well as ads, free workouts, and then other amazing instructors, you can check out the link down below for a 14 day trial at over 50 fitness. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And I look forward to reading your comments down below. Bye. I have everything from 15s to 30 pounds. Now I'd also love for you to have a chair or a bench as well for a few of the moves. All right, let's go get warmed up. Oh, and one more thing, damn it. <laughs> Now for equipment, I recommend an assortment of dumbbells from 15, or pardon me, from 15s, from moderate to heavy. I have 15s to 30s for my own um, workout. 
<laughs> Train wreck. Yep. <laughs> Let's redo that. Grab some heaviers. That heaviers. Is that a word? Grab some heavier dumbbells. <laughs> Good times. And heads up, our work time's gonna be shorter in this workout and our rest time's going to be a little longer. So please make sure you do have some dumbbells that will challenge you. Now we'll also need access to a chair or a bench and, oh, fuck me, I had it. Sorry, sorry, F-bomb. <laughs> 